I am Anil Kumar. Let me thank all the subscribers and viewers for watching my videos and posting excellent questions. Here is a question from our subscriber Irum. Irum, thanks a lot for posting this excellent question. I really do not have any videos on linear law. And the question here is kind of uh, tricky since we have to work backwards. Uh, many of my viewers may not understand this topic, uh, but still I'll make an attempt so that most get the benefit of this particular video. So we'll actually talk about linear law and see how to solve the question. The question here is, two variables x and y are related by a certain equation. This equation may be expressed in two forms suitable for drawing straight line graphs. The two graphs are shown with the variables plotted at each axis and the coordinates of a point on each line. Find the equation relating x and y. Now, most of you might have noticed by now that the two graphs do have a straight line, both of them. Both of them represent the same function. It is, however, a nonlinear function. On the horizontal normal x-axis, what do we have? We have y over x, not x. On the vertical axis, we have y, right? The other graph, on the horizontal axis, we have x over y and x in the y-axis. We are given points 2, 6 in the first graph and 1, 11 in the second graph. Now, both these graphs are linearization of a nonlinear function, right? So basically, what we have done here is we have taken the nonlinear function and applied techniques so that we could do linearization. So concept in short works like this. A linear equation will have the form y equals to mx plus b, right? What we do here is we take up the function and transform so that we could write the equation in the form of some y equals to m times some x plus a constant. Let me write that constant as c. So that is standard. So basically, when we do linearization of a nonlinear function, we write it in the form of a straight line where m, as usual, is the gradient, right? So this is the gradient or the slope, as you say, right? So this is the gradient. And that is the y-intercept, right? Y-intercept. Uh, so this is y-intercept. So the constant, right? So that is how we will treat. Now let us apply this method and see how to solve. Most of you will understand the technique from the solution which I am going to provide. So let's look into the first graph. Now in the first graph, what you notice here is that the y-axis value is y. So the capital Y is y. Do you see that? So in this first graph, what we have here is capital Y is Y. So I could write this as, let me draw a line here and then we'll work. Okay, so let me say we are working on the first graph. Now you see lower case Y, what you see here is capital Y here. I mean, that Y is this Y. So we could write this y as y equals to gradient m, we don't know, so we're writing m. The x coordinate value is y over x. Do you see that y over x? So we'll write here y over x plus the constant c, right? Plus the constant c. We don't know what this constant is, so we have to figure this out. And once we know that, then we will know how X and Y are related. You get the concept. Perfect. 
Okay, so definitely this is not a linear function, but this is linearization of a nonlinear function so that we could draw a straight line with the given gradient. Perfect. Okay. Now, when we are saying that the point 2, 6 lies, that means 2 is the value of y over x, right? Whatever is there on the x coordinate, right? That is the value of y over x. And 6 is the value of the y coordinate. So we can write this as 6 equals to m times 2, right? Plus c. Perfect. So we get our equation 6 equals to 2m plus c. That is from the first graph. Okay. Now, let's look into the second graph. Now we'll call this is our second graph. Now, in this graph, the y value is x. So this y becomes x equals 2. And here, what do we have? We have m over x over y, correct? So we have x over y in this case. Do you get the idea? So what we have to do here is we have to transform our equation in the other form, right? So somehow we should get x here. We have to write y as x. How do we do so? That is what we are trying to figure out, right? So what we could do here is that we could rearrange the given equation. So I'll leave a gap here. We'll get back to this. So what we are going to do is we are going to rearrange our equation so that we get the second form. Right? It says in two forms, right? So, so we get the second form. And then we'll compare, okay? Keeping in mind that we are looking for y, capital Y, as x and capital X as x over y. So let's work on this equation, which is y equals to m times y over x plus c. Now if I multiply by x on both the sides, then we get x times y equals to m y plus c x. But what do we need? We need x, right? So we'll divide by y, all the components. So we have xy divided by y equals to my divided by y plus cx over y. So what we get here is x equals to m plus x over y is on the x-axis, so write cx over y. Do you get the idea? Now here the constant term becomes m. So, we could write this as x equals to c times x over y plus m. Do you get the idea? So, we have written our equation in that form. So, x equals to c times x over y plus m. Do you get it? So, that is how we have written our equation. Now, we are given a point 1, 11 on this curve, on this linearized equation, correct? So, x value, which is the y component, is 11. So, we write this as 11 equals to c times x over y is 1, c times 1 plus m. So, we get our second equation. You get the idea. So, from here, we get 11 equals to c plus m right so so we have two equations and we have two unknowns working with these equations we can find the value of both c and m so i hope you got an idea of how to solve such questions perfect so let's call these equations as equation one and uh, let's uh, what we can write here as uh, let's write c equals to 11 minus m as my second equation. So I'll substitute the value of c here and find the value of m. So what I get here is that 6 equals to 2m and instead of c I'll write plus 11 minus m, right? Now taking m to the left side gives me 6 minus 11 equals to 2m minus m is m that means m is minus 5. Do you see that? 
So if m is minus 5, what is c equals to? If m is minus 5, c is equal to 11 minus of minus 5. So c is equal to 16, right? So we get c equals to 16, m as equal to minus 5, c as 16. We can substitute these values in our equation, this or that, and get the equation, correct? So let's substitute. So we get y equals to m as minus 5, y over x plus 16. Do you see that? So that is our equation. That is how x and y are related. So to get the exact value, I mean better equation form, we'll just cross multiply. So when you cross multiply, uh, let me push this page a bit up. So we get xy equals to minus 5y plus 16x, correct? Correct? So that becomes our equation. Right? So, so we'll bring the terms together and we can rearrange this a better way. To write will be 16x minus 5y equals to xy. Perfect. So that is the equation which relates x and y. So our solution here is that the nonlinear equation will be 16x minus 5y equals to xy. Perfect. So that is how we should be solving such a question. Now as a check, what you could do is, you can rewrite this equation in both the forms and you'll check that this point will lie on them. So you can do the linearization of this nonlinear equation, right? So I hope you understand the concept how we could actually get the nonlinear equation when we have a linearized graph before us as in this particular example. So Arum, I hope it helps you. Feel free to share more questions about this and uh, let's uh, fill up some more in our playlist for linear law. Anyway, thanks a lot all of you and if you like and subscribe to my videos that will be great. Share my videos with your friends. Thank you and all the best.